<laughs> We're going to talk about two things, making the X-T3 a better vlogging camera, and I'm going to give you a great hack to deal with one of the most frustrating issues with the X-T3 when it comes to shooting video. Let's do this. Hi everyone and welcome to pal to tech Today we're going to be talking about using the X-T3 for vlogging. Maybe some of you are doing behind the scenes photo shoots or promotions of your business or event videos. You need to get the shot without a lot of hassle or a lot of problematic post-production workflow. So in planning for a good vlogging camera, you need number one, to be able to see yourself. Number two, it needs to be fast and easy. And number three, it needs to be lightweight and portable. You don't want a big rig, right? So traditionally, vloggers have used Sony or Canon cameras like the EOS 80D or the G7X. Nice because you can go, you know, dink and you can see yourself. However, when Fujifilm released the X-T3 camera, it was like, boom, leapfrogging ahead because inside this tiny little camera, they packed 4K video at 60 frames a second, 10-bit H.265, 4K 60p 422 10-bit HDMI output. <gasps> Try saying that without taking a breath. I think this was the first APS-C mirrorless digital camera to do that. And then they packed in the Eterna. Oh, Eterna film simulation. Awesome film sim. Incredibly fast autofocus and very, very accurate face eye tracking in video shooting. When I heard about this thing coming out, I actually sold a kidney to buy one. In fact, you want to see the scar? Kidding. <sighs> the problem there's no flip around screen. It goes out that way, it kind of goes out that way, and that's it. And it wouldn't be such a bad thing if Fuji gave us an option to either send the camera back and have an articulating flip around screen installed on here, maybe for a couple hundred bucks or something. That would be awesome. Or to be able to, to buy the camera with that as an option, but they don't. However, there is a $40 hack that can help solve this problem that I'm gonna discuss shortly. But first, I'd like to go over my recommended settings for you for vlogging, for quick, hassle-free, run and gun. You don't know the conditions, you don't know the light, you just wanna get some quick video. So here's what you need on the equipment level. This is the Fujinon XF 18-55 to F2.8. R-L-M-O-I-S. Do not call this a kit lens. No, I, I see you. I mm -mm. Do not call this a kit lens. The next thing you wanna get is one of these. This is a variable ND filter. Why do you need this? Well, when you're shooting video, your shutter speed is going to be double your frame rate. So if you're shooting 24 frames a second, your shutter speed is one over 48. So at 1 48th, if you're out in the bright sunlight and you wanna kind of open up that aperture to get that cinematic depth of field, you have to have one of these. And, and it needs to be variable because things change. So you need to be able to turn it a little bit and all that. The next thing you're gonna wanna get, this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. It's the one I use, I like it, and the reason I like this one is because when this thing is attached to the camera, you never have to worry about turning it on or off. It just automatically turns on when you start shooting video, and it turns off when you're done. So you don't accidentally leave the mic on, and now you've killed your battery. I love this thing. It's a little bit on the large side, a little bit on the expensive side. So if size and budget are an issue, check out the Rode VideoMic Go. That is a cheaper but awesome alternative as well. And if you're going to be out and about running and gunning, get yourself a dead cat. You need one of these so that you don't have the, you know, the wind sound. I just realized something. I said the word dead cat, you know, dead cat. And then I said, you know, throughout this video, run and gun, the word gun. I said, dead cat, gun, cat, gun, you know, gun and dead cats and all that. I think YouTube monitors these videos and I don't want to get like, you know, not, not, you know, not promoted in searches for XT3 tutorials. So I'm going to probably need to balance this out a little bit. So let's just throw out a few nicer keywords, puppies, flowers, springtime, world peace, love, 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 peace, love, peace, love. 
There we go, we balanced it out. You're gonna need some way to hold the camera. It's gonna get real old doing this kind of thing. You need a tripod, but obviously you're not gonna get a huge tripod. So I would use the Joby Gorillapod 1K. This one's kind of nice. It will go You could put this thing around a tree trunk and kind of have it aimed at you. So is this a perfect tripod? No, it, 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 not by any means. It can be a little goofy and rickety, but it's what I use. I find that for the X-T3, for the weight and all of that, the Gorillapod 1K works works pretty well for me. Okay, now that you know the basic gear setup for vlogging, let's talk about the camera settings themselves. In the camera menu, you want to go into the movie icon right here and set your movie mode to 4K 16 by 9 I think is a good one. Even if you're only planning on publishing this video in 1080, if you shoot it in 4K, you're going to be getting it at a much larger size and you can kind of crop in without losing any quality or resolution. It, it, so I always shoot in 4K. You may one day want to have that higher quality. So start big from the beginning and shoot in 4K. Obviously 16 by nine is what I recommend. Now for your frame rate, I always recommend 24, which actually you set to 2398p on here. And in terms of the megabits per second, I think 100 is a little bit on the low side, although again, for YouTube, it would be fine. But I think that 400 would be a little bit too high. So I go about 200. Remember, this is just for vlogging and for trying to future proof the bit rate. The next thing you want to do is choose H264. I don't think the hardware yet on computers for editing for most people out there is quite ready for H.265 yet. So H.264, it's a great codec and it'll work really nicely with the 4K 16 by 9. The next thing you want to set your movie compression, set it to long GOP. And by the way, I'm not going to explain each one of these because this is not a deep dive into video. Although if you would like one, let me know in the comments. For film simulation, you want to set it to I like Eterna. It's a really nice film simulation simulation designed for video. And then what I do is I go down to the highlight tone and the shadow and I drop those down to minus one. But play with those. You might have different preferences. I'm just telling you what I do. So now you go down to where it says F-Log and HLG recording. Here, just choose the top one. I'm not going to get into detail about this. I don't want to overwhelm you who have not shot video before or a lot. So just put it on the top one there. Boom. Done. Easy. All right. The next one down where it says movie AF mode, you want to put it in area. I think that works the best for vlogging situations. And for AFC custom setting, I choose tracking sensitivity plus two and AF speed plus five. Some of you may disagree with that and that's okay. The next one down is one of my favorites for video. It is face eye auto detection setting. Go in there and make sure that is turned on for vlogging. You need to have that on. I keep it on eye auto. Even if on the front of the camera you have this set to S, the camera will still use continuous autofocus even if it's set to S. But it will not work if you have this switch set to M. For 4K movie output, you want to set that to 4K, 4K. Just choose the top one, okay? We're not going to get into the whole thing. Just choose the top one. So continuing down, you want to go to audio setting. And here, I would set the internal mic and the external mic to auto. Make sure these are both on auto. Next, you want to go to tally light and set the front and rear so that it is flashing. The light is flashing. That way you know the camera's shooting. The last thing you need is to shoot a whole segment and you think the camera's rolling and it's not. Okay, so set it to flashing. It's this one right here, front, rear, boom. Okay, you got your settings done. You got everything set up, your equipment, you're on location, you're ready to start vlogging. And the problem, the second you turn this camera around, you can't see anything. Framing and exposure checking become a nightmare. It's the perfect video camera except for that when it comes to vlogging. So up until now, your only option at this point is to attach an external monitor. And for vlogging, that sucks. It really sucks. I mean, you gotta get yourself like one of these monitors. It's such a pain in the butt. Now you're walking around. Welcome to Palda Tech. And this thing keeps falling off. No, it's not a solution. Using an external monitor when you're out and about vlogging with the X-T3 doesn't work. And it just sucks. Okay? It sucks. So. What do you do about it? There's this guy named Chris Galt who invented this thing called a flip screen mirror. I thought it was a joke. 
until I saw it reviewed on my pal Aaron Anderson's channel. He's got a great YouTube channel. You should subscribe. So, you know, it comes in this box right here, but I've already opened it up. So let's just pretend I haven't and we'll go through it anyway. But don't think that when you get this box, it's like all messy. Like it's not. Anyway, here it is. And, you know, little instruction manual that comes with it. I don't know if you can see this. Lastly, it's time to bolt this puppy on. <laughs> <laughs> to bolt this puppy on. I love product instructions that talk like that. That's awesome. So it comes with this nice bag, all right, which is cool. And then this is basically it. This is basically it right here. On his website, he mentions that he will also include for free this little mic adjuster. What this does is this allows you to put the microphone, because here's the problem. When you mount this to the camera, you're using the hot shoe that you normally have your external mic on. So this will allow you to add an external mic. What you do is you got to take the mic off, obviously. So you take the mic off the camera. Then you take the mirror. Let's see, I put this here. You know, this goes maybe here. Okay, so now you can adjust it, right, this way. You should always be using external audio. Okay, now the mic is on. So here's the whole setup. I, can you see the screen? Can you see it? That's it. I tested this. I took this out in the bright sunlight and I can see the reflection really well. It's not a problem at all. I can see that I'm in frame. I can adjust the neutral density filter to get a good shot just like that. And it's actually really nice. I can get my exposure. It's a low tech way to do it. I wish I had thought of this. It's one of those things, you know, I wish I had thought of, but it's great. Congratulations to the guy that thought of this. Well done, sir. A couple of things about this thing. First of all, you're looking through a mirror, a mirror. So your histogram, if you're eyeballing that, you know, if you're normally exposed to the right on a histogram, you're gonna need to expose to the left. So for its main purpose, which is checking your framing, it does a really, really good job. Is it as good as if Fujifilm had created, you know, its own built-in articulating flip around screen? No. Of course not. But the bottom line is, it's simple, it's reliable, it's a low-tech solution to a pretty big problem when trying to vlog with the Fujifilm X-T3. And I love things like this, you know? And by the way, if you are vlogging with the X-T3 as your primary camera, send me a link to your YouTube channel. I will check it out. I would love to hear about and see how you do it and things that you're learning and all of that kind of great stuff, okay? If you like these videos I'm putting together and you're not already a subscriber, consider Consider subscribing, but don't turn on notifications. People have too many notifications already, so don't click the little bell. Just click the subscribe button, okay? It helps support this channel, keeps the machine and the cogs running around here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you real soon, over and out.